If you're looking to elevate your springtime imagery with polished editing and creative looks, On One Photo Raw is here for you. Here are some springtime editing tips within Photo Raw that you can use in any genre from landscape to macro to portrait. If you enjoy the lesson, hit that like button, and as always, subscribe to our channel for all new tips and tricks on photo editing. So we're inside of Photo Raw, and let's start with my first tip for springtime edits. And this, again, can apply to any sort of genre. It doesn't have to be just a simple flower photo. It can be portrait, macro, landscape, whatever it is. Um, this works really well for you know any springtime photograph. So my first tip is to modify or boost your color in some way. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go into the saturation slider and pull it all the way to 100. Um, if, it, if it works, it works. But I mainly mean try to take the color in your image and get a bit creative with it. And yes, if that means just going into the develop tab and pulling up on the saturation slider a bit to give that color in your image a bit more oomph and a bit more pop, then by all means, please do it. But if you have a bit more time to spend on the photograph and you're looking to get a bit more creative with the edit, I would recommend modifying the color selectively. Now, real quick before we modify the color selectively, if you are looking to just go into the develop tab, pull up on the saturation and you're good to go, I would do this first. I would grab that saturation slider and pull it all the way to zero or negative 100. Pull that saturation slider all the way to negative 100. That way it's completely desaturated. Then stare at the photograph as you incrementally pull that saturation slider up. So stare at the photograph, not the slider. And then once you hit that point of, oh, okay, this is the perfect saturation point, just pull your finger off of the, the mouse or whatever you're using. And it should be a nice, decent saturation for your image. And the color should be nice and boosted. But keep in mind again, when you're pulling up on the saturation slider, you're boosting the color everywhere on the photograph. And there may be areas that you don't want that color to be overly saturated. And this is where selectively applying that color modification comes in really handy. So to selectively apply color, I typically go into my effects tab. I'll add a filter and I really enjoy this color enhancer filter. Now, the reason that I like the color enhancer filter is because you don't actually have to use any masks to modify specific colors. You can go down into the color range section of this color enhancer slider and you can find these specific color ranges and you can modify these different adjustments on them. So for example, we have red here, the prominent color in our subject, this beautiful um, tulip here is red. So let's go to our red color, I've selected that. And then in our range slider, we can choose how much of that red color range we want to target. I typically keep this around zero, but because we only have this one red color, let's maybe pull this up a little bit to about 15. From there, let's head down to our saturation and brightness, and I'll show you how you can target this one specific color. If I pull up on my saturation here, you can see it's only modifying that red color within that tulip there. It's not modifying any of that green or any of those warmer colors around the tulip. It's only modifying that color within the tulip. So let's head back over here and let's just pull up on that range maybe a bit more to about 40. Now we're going to cover a little bit more of those reds. So we'll boost them quite a bit with the saturation. And I may be going a bit too extreme for some. Um, just keep in mind that we are you know, recording through a screen, so uh, it may look a bit mild to others. So you can always go back and you know, uh, apply this to taste. I'm just going to make it a bit strong just simply for, for demo purposes. And then we have our brightness slider. So if we want to maybe modify the, uh, the illumination or the, the brightness of these, these red colors or the specific colors that you're modifying, 
this brightness slider is awesome for doing that. So if I pull this up, I can really make it a bit more illuminated, give it a bit more uh, a light in, in the scene. And so already, just with this one filter, we've got a lot of nice boost and pop inside of our tulip here. Another great way to enhance or boost colors in particular areas in your photograph is to use a color range mask. So with a color range mask, I'm actually gonna close out of this color enhancer. So we're back to the original color. Um, I'll hit the backslash key on my keyboard. Oops, so what I did is actually just, I removed this little area there. It was a little bit distracting. So I've gone and removed that area. So I've just had this flower here, but just that flower aside, we have the original color. So let's go into the local adjustments tab and I'm going to rename this red pop. I'll reset the exposure there and I'll go down to my color area and I'll increase the saturation just quite a bit. We can always go back and readjust, but just to start out, let's just increase it quite a bit. And now we need to target those reds. So let's go into our masking options. Let's go down to this color range option here and let's select this. Now in the color range area, you can see here we have this color rectangle and this color dropper. This color rectangle here is showing us the color that is used and is being targeted for the mask. So it's this color here. If I hit my view button, remember in masking, white reveals and black conceals, we can see that this color covers a lot of these areas behind the tulip there. So let's go and view the photograph and let's use this color dropper here and let's drop it on an area of red that, color, that covers uh, the majority of this tulip. And I think the majority is in this really sort of mid-range red there. So I'll select that. And if I go to my mask view, it's targeting a lot of those areas on my photo. That's not a big deal. Let's just head down to our color range slider and let's pull this back. And we can start to target less and less of those colors. So let's view our photograph now. And we have our saturation boosted, so let's turn this off and on. It's doing a great job of bringing out those red colors in that flower while also ensuring that these other areas around it are protected and they don't get that saturation. Now, if I look at that mask, I do have these little specks. If you do not like those little specks and you want to clean it up, you can of course use your masking brush. If I be on my keyboard, I have my masking brush there and I can mask those away as well. Just like that. So let's view that again. And it's doing a great job of, you know, again, just popping those colors. And, you know, we can always go in and copy these masks and apply them to different adjustments, filters, layers, you know, you name it. And we'll also talk about that in the next tip, which we'll get into right now. My next tip for springtime photograph editing is to modify the textures and the details in your image in some way. Because we're dealing with a lot of color or we're dealing with a lack of color in these springtime images, whatever it may be, we need to really pay attention to the details and the textures and ensure they are interesting and they, they coincide with you know, how the overall image and the look is going. So one thing I would recommend doing is either maybe popping detail in specific areas in the image or going for a more softened, softened, subdued look 
with a glow or maybe an Orton style look by kind of combining the two. So let's take a look at this landscape image. So if we were to go in here, let's sort of use the same sort of technique we did with the first image and just head down to our color. We'll just pull it back or the saturation slider rather. We'll pull the saturation slider back and then we'll incrementally pull this up until we get you know, a bit, a bit of a color boost. We're not going to mask this in. Uh, but now that we've modified the color, let's go up here to the effects tab. Let's add a filter. And there's a couple different filters that you can use for detail. Now, the most common one, hands down, is going to be dynamic contrast. But if you're looking for an alternative that's also really fun to play with and adds nice detail, it's this HDR look filter. This is an awesome filter for providing detail as well. It's sort of like the surreal preset inside of the dynamic contrast filter. So inside of HDR look, we have similar controls to dynamic contrast. The great thing about HDR look, however, is it's really easy to go in here and we can also add glow if we, if we want to. Now, what I'm going to do with HDR look is I'm going to leave it at this surreal preset just so we can see what's going on. Now, I, again, I know it's a bit intense, but just because we're demoing it, I want you, be, you to be able to see what's going on. So I know uh, that, I, that I should tone it down, but it's just going to be intense for a second. I'll tone it down later on in the edit. So we have this being applied to the entire photograph. Now, just like with our color range mask, we were able to target specific areas in our image really easily. And with landscapes, because we're dealing with so many different colors, there's a variety of colors in this scene, it would be a little bit tough to target every single color in our foreground. An easy way to target foregrounds and backgrounds inside of Photo Raw is to use luminosity masks. With the luminosity mask, you can target the brighter and darker areas in your scene, such as my background and my foreground. So let's go into the masking options here, and I'm going to select Lumen. And if I view this right out of the gate, remember white reveals and black conceals, it's showing me the white is applied to the top area because it's brighter. By default, the luminosity mask is going to be targeting those brighter areas in your scene. So white is covering the top, and then we have that black and darker gray on the bottom foreground because it's the darker area in the scene. So what we want to do here is we want to invert this. So now that we have the white on the bottom on those darker areas. And then we have those darker grays and the black of the mask on top. So now what we're gonna do to modify this mask and clean it up from the top area is we're going to use this level slider. Now the level slider works with these three different tones. We have our shadows, we have our midtones, and our highlights. Now because we've inverted this mask, we've also inverted the levels. So with our shadow tone, Point here, if we were to pull this point to the right after the invert, it's going to apply that tone to the mask. So you can see if I pull this to the left, it removes it from the mask. If I pull it to the right, it will add it in. Same thing with the midtones. Pull it to the left, it will remove it. Pull it to the right, it will apply it to the mask. Now we don't really want these midtones or too many of them in this middle section because we want those removed from the top just a little bit. We can also use this highlight point, remove that. And there we go, we've cleaned that up from the entirety of the sky. Now let's pull this shadow point to the right that will bring more of those shadow tones into the, the mask. And then we can sort of play with the mid-tone point. And it looks like we're clear on the sky, so let's just pull those shadow tones to the right. And there we go. We've used that levels slider there to completely eliminate that sky area from the mask. So now that we've created that mask, it looks awesome. We've eliminated the sky from the mask and we've just 
place the mask on our foreground area. Let's view that photograph. Let's turn this up and on. It's looking awesome. I really love how it's just targeting our foreground. Let's go in here and just give it a bit more color here. Really make it pop. I know it's a bit intense, but springtime color looks awesome. So now what we can do, now that we've just targeted the detail and textures in our foreground, let's soften up the details and textures in our sky. So let's view the mask that we've created. You know, we've already done all of the hard labor. We can copy that mask. Let's add another filter. Let's add one of my favorites, the glow filter. And let's use this darker preset. And I'm going to go into my masking options, paste the mask. We got to invert it now to flip it from bottom to the top. If we view this, turn this up and on, gives it a nice soft glow. One thing I might do just to give it a bit more detail is I'm actually going to go into my local adjustments. I'll paste that same mask we created. Remember, I'll invert it so that I can modify the sky. And you can see now it's using that default darken exposure there. So it's automatically set to darken by default. And it's doing a pretty good job, but it's a bit intense. So let's just modify that opacity so that it's not so intense on the image there. And I think that looks pretty good just like that. If I turn it off and on, we can see a lot more of that detail in those clouds there. So if I turn this off and on, or if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard rather, we have a nice separation of adjustments here with our detailed foreground and our glowy background. Let's go into the effects tab and let's just modify this HDR look to taste. So let's just pull this opacity back. And I'm also going to feather the mask a bit to soften these areas up in these trees there. And my last springtime photo editing tip is to get creative with your overlays, your textures, and your borders. Because springtime has so many awesome colors and it has awesome light, sun flares are a really awesome tool for adding in a bit more creativity and just a bit more of a spotlight onto your subject. With this image, I've gone in and I've added a sun flare. And you can see by turning it off and on, it's doing a really phenomenal job. It's just giving it a bit more light and glow, especially when there's already a bit more sun on the subject there. So if I close out of this, you can see it's, you know, it's doing an okay job on its own. It's got some light coming in, but that sun flare really brought in a bit more of a glow and a bit more, you know, interest into this area. Now, before I add that sun flare filter, I just wanted to talk a bit about when you should add sun flares versus when you should avoid them. I would recommend adding in sun flares to subjects and photographs that already have a little bit of sun and some sort of shadowing on them. And also I would recommend adding them into images that already have light or some sort of light that you can see on the subject. So you can see in here, in these hairs on this clematis, there's already light beaming in from somewhere in this scene. Now we'll talk about this in a second, but it's really important that you identify where that light is coming in from if you're trying to place the sun flare, because if you place the sun flare in the wrong direction, it's going to look a bit wonky and weird. So. Let's add a sun flare. So we'll add a filter. We'll add the sun flare filter. And right out of the gate, that, that looks nice. It seems to work well with the light that's on the photo. And that's great. If that's what happens when you add the sun flare filter, that means that the light coming in 
is coming in from the right side of your, your environment and your scene. So I turn this off and on, it's coming from that right side. Now, if I were to swap this, you can see it gets, it, it doesn't look right, it feels off. And that's probably because of the shadows on these, these little hairs and these uh, pieces of flower, they're to this side. So if we were to have light over here, we wouldn't really have many shadows on the left side. So that's really important as well when you're looking to add in the sunflower filter onto your image is where is the light coming in from and is it going to look nice with the light that I already have? So if we go back to that original one or the default one, that looks pretty nice as is. Now with that sunflower filter, just like many filters inside of Photo Raw, we can really get creative with the, the settings. So let's go down into our tone and color. And I'm just going to pull back on the brightness a little bit. And I'm also going to pull back on the saturation a little bit just to ensure that it's not taking over the color of that corner there. Then I'll select this option here. This is going to allow me to move this around. And I'm just going to move this right into the corner there. So it sort of fills that, that dark void there. And I think that looks pretty good just you know, like that. Let's just turn this off and on. And that's looking really nice so far. One pro tip that I always use with these sun flares is I go into this gear icon. I go down to these three sliders here. These allow me to protect these specific tones from this filter. And I'll usually use shadows, at least to some extent, and mid-tones to some extent. If I turn that off and on now, it's a bit more subtle, it's a bit more gentle, and it's a bit more natural. And because this photo is you know, pretty minimalistic, we could keep adding on more overlays such as textures and borders. So let's add a texture. I'll go to textures and even something like that looks really nice if we were to blend this in a bit differently. And one way we can blend these in a bit differently is we can go into this mode here in our textures and we can use these different modes. I actually like that normal mode there and I'm just going to pull this opacity back a little bit. And now it sort of looks like it's um, a mural, you know, it has this sort of art aspect to it. And, you know, there's so many different textures in here that you can use on these images, especially when you have large tonal areas like I do in these, these flower petals. So let's just go and choose a different texture. Let's go to walls, or sorry, let's go to category here. And let's go to paper. And even something like that looks really, really nice for something like this. And I found this tattered paper blue, which actually I really like on this image for some reason. It sort of just is a nice harshness to the, you know, the fragility and the, the softness of this, this flower here. So I, I do like this, you know, texture here with this tattered paper blue. Just like that, you know, again, you can pick any texture, really just sort of showing how it works. Um, but then let's add one last filter here to top this off and let's add a border. I love borders because they just give it such an artsy vibe and they just make them look a little bit more sophisticated. And even with that texture, it looks really nice. It looks like an art piece. It looks like I'm going to print that and put it on the wall. One thing when it comes to borders, I would recommend going down to the bottom and making sure that this transform section is how you, how you want it. More specifically, this fit image slider. Because you're replacing a border, you always wanna use this fit image slider to ensure that the composition matches what you wanted to see out of it. So you could see there, it was cropping quite a bit and I didn't really like that. So I pulled up on this fit image slider to about five and it brought back those edges that I was missing. 
And because we're using, you know, a bit more of a decayed uh, overlay in this texture, let's go and use a decayed vintage style border. So I'll go to category. Let's maybe go to, to film. And let's use one of these here. I mean, if it's something like this looks pretty cool and creative, you know, it's, it's not so, you know, stale and just, you know, run of the mill, like most spring photos are. So, you know, this is just giving you an idea on what you can do and what sort of creative avenues you can take when it comes to overlays and just giving it a bit more interest. And I thought it'd be great to sort of just bring all of those tips into one final edit for the last image here with a springtime portrait and show you how quick and easy you can apply these to a springtime image and get the most out of that photo. So the first one was color. So let's go into effects. Let's add a filter. Let's go to color enhancer. And because we're dealing with a you know, grassy area, we have a lot of greens in here. Let's just choose this foliage preset. Let's modify the taste around 70 or so. We have a nice boost in those greens. Now let's add another filter that deals with the textures or the softness of those textures. Let's add glow. And for this particular photograph, let's just use our more menu here and let's go to Orton Clean. Give it sort of a dreamy feel, you know, a nice dreamy vibe that goes along with the softness of this scene. So if we turn this up and on, you can see it's looking really nice. It's softening everything up and it's giving it a bit more air. So we've dealt with our color. We've dealt with the textures. The last thing was getting creative with the overlays. Let's go into the add filter option. Let's add a sun flare. Let's make sure it looks correct. I think that works nicely. Let's just place it. Remember, use the gear icon. Ensure that particular tones are how you want them. And just with those three filters, it's doing a really awesome job. Now let's just add, you know, a couple fan favorites. I'm going to just add a vignette. And I'll add a border. And I think the crop of that border is, is totally fine on this image. So yeah, I think that's all it takes. You know, a, a few different filters, a few clicks, and we've got this. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.